Hello my lovelies, welcome to another art tutorial with me, Claire Ferguson Walker, in conjunction with Arts Care Goval Calve. And today we're going to be doing another beach pebble tutorial, and this time we're going to be doing a seal. Check this out, it's so very cute. <gasps> seal, Mr. Seal, we love you. So you are going to need an oblong shaped beach pebble along with some white acrylic paint and some black acrylic paint, a very, very fine brush and a not so fine brush for slapping your white on at the beginning. Get some tissue and some water for washing your brush down and make sure that you've got plenty of time and patience to really enjoy this tutorial. Let's get going, shall we? Going. I'm going to keep my other seal here, just, just out of view there so that I can use that as reference. And as usual with all of my pebble paintings, I'm going to start by just sketching out the basic shape in pencil so that we know where we're going. And it's an ever so simple shape really for the seal using the end of the pebble as one half of the circle, I'm going to just draw in another circle like this, edge of the circle, to represent the seal's face. And there's no absolute right and wrong in terms of the exact dimensions of this. Um, could be a slightly bigger seal, slightly smaller seal. And the eyes are they're actually sort of teardrop shape on their sides and they're nice and big. I'm just going to freehand them like teardrops going down like that either side. There's one. There's the other over here. And if you look online at baby seals, especially white ones as an arctic type of arctic seal their eyes are just so huge they don't even, they just don't look real they almost look like cartoon characters they're just huge so there we go two nice big teardrop shapes like that and underneath the, the muzzle is sort of a squashed circle shape so we'll do a kind of pinched circle baked bean shape underneath the eyes like that almost looks a little bit like a pig snout at first but that's to give the impression of of a snout that's sticking out slightly and we'll just do the nose there that's almost heart shaped and we'll go over this with paint but it really is just to mark it out and that line there down the middle just like a cat's face nice smile and little mouth there at the bottom. And that's our basic seal face. I'm going to put a flipper in here. And as for the shape and size of the pebble, as long as it's vaguely oblong shaped, you're going to get away with it. And the tail, we're going to give the impression of the tail curling round. So it gives it this lovely three dimensional quality. There we go. And that is our basic starter for the seal. And the other wonderfully simple thing about the seal in terms of the paint that you use, it is black and it is white. And that is it. And we're just going to get going getting that white paint on there and I'm using a fairly big brush for this bit because it really is just a case of kind of getting it on and I'm gonna adhere to the pencil marks that I've made you'll see what I mean so I'm just getting it on getting it on on the main body at the moment with quite a big brush I'll vaguely mess those areas mm -hmm. And this is just fairly chucked on there, really. As you can see, I'm not worrying too much about the neatness. I'm going to vaguely get it all brushing in one direction. 
and it doesn't matter in fact it's good if you can see the brush marks because actually that creates the look of fur even more and the beauty with working with acrylic paint is it dries quickly relatively quickly say quickly today's attention span longer than 11 seconds i'm afraid <laughs> go brilliant i'm just gonna get it all looking like it's going in one one direction brilliant and i'm gonna go in get these bits the reason that i've done them separately like this is actually much more to do with the direction of the brush stroke than anything else I could have just blobbed it all on and picked out the detail afterwards, but this is just the way I roll. <laughs> I'm hoping the cat doesn't come and interrupt this class. She might do. And it also doesn't matter if you get any of the, the grey of the pebble sort of coming through. It actually, I think almost adds to the realism element it kind of creates a sort of natural shading effect so there we go we've pretty much done the body of the seal I'm going to go in and start doing that face with a, a smaller brush just so that I can capture some of the details there we go this one will do mm. I'm using Windsor and Newton titanium white and you know what not all not all acrylic paints are made equally some really are better than others and I, I really rate the Windsor and Newton actually they are good quality some cheaper acrylic paints you you just might as well be sort of painting with slightly coloured water they just don't have the coverage so it is worth spending a few more pennies getting a good quality paint you see here I'm avoiding the bits of detail again as I say you don't have to do it like this you could always just do it completely blanket white and go back in and pick out your details afterwards. I just really like to do it like this. And once this is all done, I'll actually let this first layer dry a little bit so that when I do go in with the, the black to pick out the details, it doesn't instantly smudge into grey, although we are using some grey tones. We'll do black and white first. A giant head this one. <laughs> Matthew has a giant head. <laughs> and I always like to follow the natural contours, the natural shape of the face and the body with the brush strokes because actually what you're doing there is as I said before you're just giving that ever so slightly realistic idea that that the fur is falling in those directions come in to the muzzle oh, it looks like a sloth now oh that would be a good one to do actually wouldn't it a sloth pebble they're so cute sloths 
do that one really slowly. <laughs> Be funny, wouldn't it, if I if I did the did the animal pebbles in the style of whichever animal I'm doing it as. Not sure what a seal would be like. Really cute. <laughs> Give you a blooming nasty bite if you approached it. It's the sort of animal that you'd want to go and stroke if you saw it on a beach and you'd be really, really unwise to do, to do as such. I did once go swimming with a seal, not deliberately, not like to a swimming pool. <laughs> like, hey, hey, my seal friend, should we go swimming today? Sure, grab your drugs. No, I was swimming off the coast of an island in West Wales called Skokum Island. Not to be confused with Skomer Island that lots of people know. Skokum is slightly less heard of, I think, slightly more obscure. But it's really known for its bird populations. And I went there when I was little girl and I dove off the harbour into the sea and a really big common seal swam up and swam around me and checked me out loads in the water and I wasn't scared at all I was really genuinely just like oh wow this is totally amazing and then my dad came to check on me spotted the seal went get out Get out of the water now! And kind of acted how you might imagine you'd act if it was a shark. It really scared me. And um, he said, although we're not their natural diet at all, they could choose to come and give you a nip if they wanted to. And you'd know all about it. It would be a nasty bite. So there we go. Oh, we're pretty much there. And I'm going to let that first layer dry. Ooh, 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 ooh. Get on there. Going to let that dry and then come back and get the details on. And we've got a nicely dried white seal in front of us and our next tone that we're going to use is the black and we're going to pick out all of our black details this next round and we'll finish off at the end by adding in some grey shading shadowy shadowy areas but we're going to go for the black now so what you need for this bit is a very, very fine brush. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm using a teeny, tiny, tiny little brush. And I think I think it's either a number one or a number two. Um, and you can pick them up for fairly, fairly cheaply. Um, again, like the paint, not all brushes are made equal. Um, and I would suggest getting a reasonable quality one. Um, the really sort of cheap, cheap, cheap ones that you get in those multi-packs, um, quite often the, the hairs just start coming out of the brushes and they become um, basically impossible to use. So spend a bit, but we're talking a couple of quid. Right, so I'm gonna do these eye sockets now and I'm actually gonna just fill in the, the whole area of that, of that eye and we'll go back in and pick out where it needs to be defined as a pupil and a socket. <laughs> that sounded very scientific, didn't it? Going to define the pupil and the socket. <laughs> so there we go, we've got one black, black teardrop there. My teardrops are black, for I am an emo seal. Ooh. Oh no, I'm running away. It's starting to look like it's got winged eyeliner on. <laughs> I may have to go and recover that. 
<laughs> done that myself when doing my own makeup. The wing starts getting longer and longer. Try and match it up with the other side. <laughs> End up just painting your whole face black. I've winged my entire face. Here we go. Brilliant. And I've done the eyes first because we will need to go back in to the eye to get the light in there and the iris and just bring these blackened hollows to life. There we go. Brilliant. They don't have to be exactly, exactly matched in terms of size and shape, but as close as possible is a good thing. I'm definitely going to sort that one out the other side. I'm not happy. Not happy, Bob. Not happy. Mm -hmm. There we go. We want them kind of coming down. We don't want them looking like eyeliner wings. That's huge. <laughs> and we'll do the nose. Little black heart. And if you go over your edges like I've done there with the with the eye, you just go back in and recover it and just paint over it. That's the beauty of the paint. It's all recoverable, thank goodness. I think, you know, a lot of people are kind of put off doing realism in art. They just fear that it's going to just be rubbish and not work. But you know what? You can always keep going until you get something you're happy with. And practice really does make perfect. Give him a little smile there. Hello. And just define that bottom lip a little bit. Oh, look at that. That's starting to really bring it to life, isn't it? Wonderful. And I'm going to give it some tufty little eyebrows here. My eyebrows are on fleek. <laughs> just going to microblade the eyebrows in. And that looks totally rubbish. <laughs> Not happy with that second eyebrow at all. It's migrating across its head. <laughs> Bad eyebrow, no. I'm actually going to wipe that off with a little bit of a damp, damp bit of tissue. <laughs> there we go. I have surreptitiously, it's a good word, given you another technique for sorting it out. Wipe it off. Get that in a better position. Better, better. That was really bringing, bringing this baby to life. And I won't put in the whiskers just yet. I'll put some under the chin. Wow, a little bit of whiskerage there. Because 
we've got some grey tone to put on that muzzle first. So I'm going to do that before I put the whiskers in. And in fact, that is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to start using some grey, which, as we know, very easy to make grey. You just mix your black and your white. And I'm going to do that while that black is drying. So a little bit of grey. And it can be quite a light grey, actually. It doesn't have to be a dark grey. Here we go. I'm going to use that grey to define the head a little bit. Kind of just create a bit of shading there. Because what we're doing is creating the illusion that the seal is turning its head to look at us. Which was almost blending it with my finger. Yep, it's not a pastel, it's an acrylic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why I did an impression of the Queen then. <laughs> we are. And I am going to blend that in slightly with some white, just because it looks a bit hard. It's a bit kind of hard, that grey line. So let's get a bit of white on there before it dries, just to kind of blend the edges of it a little bit so you get away from that hard line. So what I'm doing here is just going along the edge of that grey with a little tiny bit of white on the brush and I'm just blending, blending it in just to soften that edge a little bit. Otherwise it just looks a bit hard. Yeah, that's good. Oop. E -e -e emergency, too much white. Uh, group. Uh, now it's a nice sort of subtle subtle, subtle shape there on the head. Too subtle up there, used a bit too much white. <laughs> there, that'll do. Getting too perfectiony about it. Blendy, blendy, blend. Fine. Yep, that's good enough. And um, we'll do the same process to go around the little flipper. There we go. And I'm going to put a little bit of a sort of shadow there on the edge of that flipper. Just again to give the impression that it's lifting it slightly and it's got a bit of shadow underneath. Just to give it that kind of little bit of a 3D look. It's really subtle. But it just tricks the eye a little bit when you look. It just creates that, that effect of a little shadow going on. Super subtle, super effective. These little things are what trick the brain. Here we are, just to find the top of it a little bit. Brilliant. And the same with the old tail. So we're imagining that this tail has come round, it's folding round. We could do the same thing here, create a little bit of shadow there as if it's lifting its tail ever so slightly, to blend that in, uh, get away from that hard edge, blendy, blendy, blend. Nice, nice. And I'm going to define the end of that tail a little bit. 
Uh, it's got a little bit of a flipper thing going on. Lovely. Brilliant. And the other thing that we're going to do with the grey is give the illusion of layers of fur by just creating these little flecks coming down the body, which just again tricks the brain into seeing this kind of line of fur. And you can do it really subtly, really, really subtly, probably even more subtly than I've done it there. Grays over slightly dark and go over it a bit with white in some places. And it just creates that illusion of fur. That's it, that's it, that's good. Do it a bit harshly at the beginning. Less is more, less is more. And we'll do one more layer of that effect. A little bit further down the body. Somewhere up there. <laughs> just creates that little bit of an illusion of fur. Happy little line of fur. <laughs> Great, I'm pleased with that. Right, and I reckon, I reckon that that black will have dried enough now to go back in and start putting some detail on those eyes. And we'll do that now. Let's just check that back. Yep, pretty good. So our final part will be putting the final details in the eye. Let's have a good look here. Our one that's done. Got all of this light to put in there. And although it actually looks quite complicated, do you know what? It's not. All that's in there is a tiny little C shape, inverted C shape of grey, and then some white. It's literally just white and grey, but it creates that incredible lifelike effect of light. First things first, we're going to salvage, salvage that eye. So I'm going to neat knock that edge over there. What was I thinking? Neat that there. There we go. There we go. Good. There, that sorted that out. Brilliant. So the first thing that we're going to do is go around the whole shape of the eye with white. And we're going to do that just inside that black line. So being very, very careful, we're going to go just inside black line in both of these eyes. Here we go. And this is where the old steady hand comes in. Don't want to have drunk too much coffee. Up shaking like mad. Now, some people really do struggle to keep a steady hand. And one thing that you can do if you're really struggling with a, with a shaky hand like this is to actually hold your hand steady with the other hand. 
that's something that can be done. You can actually hold it steady with your other hand. I'm all right, I don't need to. That's something that can be done. Carry on just following that line round. And I might have to neaten this off again with a bit of black, but there we go, that's far, that looks okay. I'm gonna go along the top now as well. Slightly gone astray there. That's all right. There we go. We've got that eye done. Brilliant. And then the next thing we're going to do, we'll stick to this eye, seeing as we're there. We're going to just create the actual eyeball, the white of the eye. And the thing with these seals is they have ginormous pupils. So the vast majority of their eye is in fact pupil and iris. They have a very, very small white of the eye. There's hardly anything there, but it is there enough to just define the edge of the eyeball. And when I was talking earlier about defining differentiating between the eyeball and the socket. This is what I was talking about. So we are going to create the effect of the white of this seal's eye. There we go. Just running down there. And so this area in here is in fact socket socket to them. There we go. So we have created the white of this seal's eye. And now we're going to do the whole thing. Oh, shifting in my chair. On the other side. And without a doubt, this is the most tricky bit of this, of this tutorial. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to follow the line of the eye just inside the black teardrop shape so that we keep the definition of that and go all the way to the edge in there. Go. Good. Okay, and make this bit as neat as possible. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but we may as well get it as neat as we can, eh? While we're here. It's quite warm here today. My kitchen's got a big glass door, so it's a little bit like a greenhouse in here. And the paint's drying quite quickly on the brush. There we are. That's good. And we're going to follow that down all the way to the bottom over here. Lovely. And you can see it just creates that subtle but still defined area of the eye. I'll get that there a bit neater. Lovely. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to actually reload my brush because it is drying out. There we go. 
And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to go in and we're going to define the eyeball, the white of the eye. There we go. Lovely. Great. And neaten that up with a little bit of black and a bit squiffy there. There we go. Now, although we're working with the white, I love doing the light in the eyes at the very end because it just brings it to life so much. So I'm going to do the grey work now in the eye. And remember I said the grey just looks like a tiny, tiny little C shape. And it's, it's the iris is what it is. It's that section of the eye that widens and closes depending on how much light the seal wants in its little eyes, in its pupils. It's little eyes, who am I saying little eyes? Not little at all, well, they're huge. So again, we need steady, steady hand here because this is tiny, fine, detailed work. And we're going to create this C just here inside the eye. There we go, one C. I'm going to go back over that with a little bit of black just to make it even thinner again. And the same on the other side. We actually want both of these C's sort of pointing in the same direction, which is kind of the wrong way round back on itself. I'll try and get it in exactly the same place so that my seal doesn't look cross-eyed. There we go. Great. I'm just going to go in with a little bit of black just to make that even finer, even thinner. Lift that camera up a little bit. It's going in and out of focus quite a lot, isn't it? Let's see if that helps. There we go. I'm just going in there with some black to make these C's even finer. Tiny, tiny little C. You see that? There we go. Same on the other side. Great. And I think what I'll do now is some of the grey shading. I'm just going to put the light in and the eyes just right at the end because I love it. So we're going to do our grey shading now and there's not loads of this to do. Um, and the first place I'm going to do it is just on the white of the eye at the edge where it hits the bottom lash line. Lash line, amazing. Are you wearing fake lashes today, Mr. Seal? And the same on the top. Just creates a tiny, tiny little bit of shading. And it's just enough to kind of bring it to life. I made a bit of a mess of that one, so I'm going to neaten it off. Put it back there. There we are. Put 
a bit of white there just to blend it down and we're doing tiny 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 bits of shading here and as I said before it's it's such a subtle thing to do but it's what really creates the realism it really tricks the brain into seeing things as having depth and three dimension three dimensionality <laughs> hi i'm here all week usually for me to say Snow at the bottom a little bit of shade in there Brilliant. just neaten that bit up there you can actually create the illusion of the fur on the face ever so slightly very 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 subtly just coming over the eyes tiny tiny bit so sort of from the nose just just going in there ever so slightly and it just again it's so subtle but it just tricks the brain ever so slightly into seeing that area as fairy there we go lovely lovely right i think it's time that we put our whiskers on so a little bit of black and we just go dot 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 round and dots on that muzzle and whiskers coming out just like a little cat They really are sort of dog-like, cat-like little creatures, seals. They're so beautiful. Okay. And same on the other side. They don't have to match exactly. Good thing too, because they don't. <laughs> And we'll get those going out there. Oh, look at that. That's really coming to life. And for our final thing, we get the lad in the eyes and the light on the nose. So let's get a little bit of light on the nose. And what we're going to do is we are going to do a dot and a line a dot. There we go. Ooh, that's a lot of light on the nose. That's fine. It's a very shiny nose. Dot and a line. Ooh, just coming down like that. There we go. Lovely. And the same with the eyes. Gonna do a big dot inside that C shape so almost connecting the C so in the space within the C we're going to do a big dot of light like that oh lovely oh and the same on the other side Oh, look at that. It looks so happy and so cute. And then we're going to do a dot and a line on the inside here. Smaller dot, dot, and a line. And we just follow the line round, follow the shape of that C to create that line. There we go. Light in the seal's eyes 
And again, you can always go back in afterwards with a bit of black just to neaten that line up. I think I will. Dot. Uh, uh, and flying round. Ooh, that one came out nice and fine. Lovely, but it just really, really, really brings it to life. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm really pleased with that seal. I'm going to neaten up that little line over there. Tiny, tiny bit. Brilliant. Ooh, virtually disappeared. That will do very nice and fine. We might make that lose one a little bit smaller as well. Brilliant. Oh, there. Perfect. And what you can do once that's completely dry, you can varnish the whole thing, which will give it um, an extra layer of protection and a little bit of a sheen, making him look like he's just come out of the sea. Or you can do what I did with this one, which is actually use, I used a tiny, tiny little bit of clear nail varnish and I actually just put it on his eyes. I don't know if you can see, but eyes and nose. Can you see that? The light shining off it just to give it even more of a realistic feeling. So look at this. I think we've got a mummy and a baby seal. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, brilliant. Well, they certainly get my approval. Seal. Thank you so much for watching my lovelies. I really hope that you have fun and post some comments down below if you enjoyed this tutorial and look out for more tutorials from me, Claire Ferguson Walker with Arts Care. Take care now, my lovelies.